Ah, 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 All right. We are live on the air. This is the show where Ohio froze down. Ohio is on fire. Hooray. And I am your host, Daniel Diesel, Big Diesel. And tonight, we got a really good show for you. Although, I like to think all the shows I've done have been pretty good, but you know what? This is pretty good also, what I'm going to do tonight. We're doing a bit of superhero theme tonight, because, um... Later on, I'm, I have a live interview with members of a group called the Comic Book League. They are a new group here on the Wright State campus. They're in their first year right now. And actually, I have, there's five members from the group. There's like a big bunch of them. I usually get like one or two members that come, but um, perhaps because I also am a member of this group, maybe that's why they're coming out in full force. But there's five of them. They're going to be here live in the studio. We're going to talk about comic books. We're going to talk about... Um, comic book culture and all that good stuff. I got some good questions for them and um, hopefully it should be a great interview but that's coming up later on. Of course I'm going to be playing some superhero music and I'm going to do OMVP and I'm going to get some off my chest about um, heroes in fantasy and in real life but that's at the end of the show when I do my final message. So anyway, but, but for those of you that are listening at home, welcome. I appreciate it, and I mean, it is spring break. I know um, this is kind of a normal week for the Wright State University campus because we are in our spring break right now. And I looked outside. It does not look like spring break at all. Like, I remember when I was a little boy, when it was spring break, and the sun was shining in the sky. You could go outside in your bikini. You could um, play with your, um, take, take your dogs to the park, give them a walk. Spring break was supposed to be this fantasy. What the heck's going on here? It's Right now it's 30 degrees outside. We're recovering from snow. In fact, we might get some more snow this weekend. Um, I think um, spring break favors more those of um, warm weather countries, even warm weather states here in, here in America. I know Florida and um, California, down south, if you will. They always have warm weather, so they don't have to worry about it. But here in Ohio, Unless you made any plans to get out of Ohio, or you have some commitments you got to make, such as host a college radio show, then you just got to deal with it. you got to deal with really bad weather on spring break. But there's a way to counteract this. You know, there's ideas on how you can celebrate spring break. You're not you don't have to be out in the dark all the time um, celebrating your spring break. I got some ideas. So here's what you can do to have a nice little spring break celebration right here in the state of Ohio. But for one, you can go frozen pond surfing. All you gotta do is go to your local park, you know, get a surfboard and just surf away, just like always. Of course, you can also have body shots of hot cocoa. <laughs> I like that. I might try that out. Then there's also um, snow beach volleyball. You know, instead of stay sand, you would have, you know, ice blocks of snow. And um, perhaps you could use Frosty Snowman's head as the volleyball and just bounce it back and forth. Oh, it's some good times. Good idea for spring break in Ohio, of course. Then another idea that I have you could celebrate is have a wet scarf contest. Or maybe you have um, a, a wet mitten contest. Any article of clothing, you can just get all wet. Have a contest and give the winner ten bucks. You know, and anyway, enough about that. Okay, um... Another idea I have is ice pong, where um, you know how people play beer pong when they're on spring break? Well, instead of beer, we just use ice. Get yourself blocks of ice, just lay it on that table, wherever you're going to play this game at, whether it's the ping pong table or maybe a coffee table. Lay two blocks of ice from either side of each other's, and then just um, get the pong stuck to the ice block. And every time you get a pong stuck to the ice block, that person... He's got to chew the ice block of his mouth. So yeah, they could lead some bloody glump, some bloody gums there. So but that should be a fun game. And also, another idea I have, rub against each other. I know spring break people love to dance, they love to get close. I do suggest you get close, but only to create body heat. That way, um, you'll stay warm, you won't get any frostbite. And it's a good idea to actually rub against each other this spring break here in Ohio. Of course, another idea I have is to visit your tanning salon and tan your sweater. Listen, the only thing you probably can tan is um, the exterior, the um, ex exterior of your clothing. 
since um, you can't really expose any skin, just um, find some good clothing to go to the tanning salon with. And one last idea, there's always a big concert at Spring Break. Big concert that people enjoy. We can have a concert here in the state of Ohio for Spring Break, but I suggest we all buy a ticket to go see Mecklemore and Ryan Lewis on ice. Yes, it's only it's 30 bucks for children, $50 at the door. Just And of course, Mickey Mouse would be there. Mecklemore, he can rap with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and be greatest concert ever. So there you go. Now here on Ohio is on fire, every day is a holiday. Every day is a holiday. And um, today's no different. Um, today, um, throughout the nation, which not a lot of people know about this, um, there's a, today we have a celebration called um, Multiple Personality Day. And Multiple Personalities, it's for people, um, I, it's kind of a mental disease where um, they kind of switch behaviors on the flip of the dime like that. But um, today, they had, yes, people with that disease have their own holiday. We, I mean, we have Breast Cancer Month. I guess we can have a day for people with multiple personality disorders. So anyway, um, but I got to think, and uh, what's well, a good way to celebrate National um, personal, Multiple Personality Day? What would be a good way to really celebrate that? I don't think you really can make fun of people with those diseases. But I tell you, the people at Silly Holidays, they're going to try, though. But um, one thing is to change your mood every 10 seconds. Um, what you do, you start... Well, I could try you, you could start real slow like this. Just be in a real slumber mood. Oh. And then get all cheery and happy. Yee! Look at me, I'm Dan Diesel. Yeah, just back and forth every 10 seconds. And being that this is superhero night and I'm interviewing a comic lead, I'm thinking there should be a superhero that reflects the powers of someone who has multiple personalities. And that's why we should create a guy called Bipolar Man. He fights crime whenever he wants to. Alright, and then, um, according to the website, when you wish someone a happy multiple personality day, you need to um, greet each person multiple times, you know, to cover each personality. So that'd be a good idea to do that. And then the last thing you should do, this is my idea, you should give them a hug, then punch them in the face. All right. All right, enough about that. Now that I've alienated half my audience, no, I'm just kidding. Maybe maybe 30% of my audience. Um, no, that's, it's a real holiday. I didn't make up the holiday. It's a real thing that's happening today here in America. Um, so... All I suggest is to be strong, just, you know, maybe, if you have multiple personality day, this is a day to be happy. Just pat yourself on the back. And we are back with Ohio is on Fire. I am Daniel Diesel. And just now I played um, the, the main title to the Lewis and Clark TV show. That, if you remember that show, that was from the um, mid-1990s. It had Dean Cain as Superman. Of course, um, there was um, that... I always forget her name, but she played Lois. She was also on Desperate Housewives, which that was a show she did after, like in the early 2000s, after she did the Lois and Clark show. Um, Terry Hatcher, there you go. Now I remember her name. But um, yeah, they were co-stars on Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. That was their theme. And then also I had, um, I did Flash from Queen. That was from the motion picture movie, um, Flash. They um, did the entire soundtrack, or is their most noted for that song, Flash. He's a miracle. All right, and then of course I start off that block with Iron Man by Black Sabbath, and that came um, that that song came out way back in 1970. And the little secret that song actually has nothing to do with the actual Iron Man comic book character. It's just um, it's something that it was adopted later on in the movies. But um, so anyway, just a little secret there. But um, anyway, whenever people hear the song now, they do think of the comic book. So it's not it's something that's changed over time. I guess a ret they, they call it a retcon, if you will. But anyway, I am back live. It's now time for everyone's favorite segment. It's now time for a superhero edition of OMVP, Ohio's Most Valuable Pedestrian. And guess what? I got some music, special music for this one. Listen. Oh, yeah, where's my music? There we go. Yeah, Batman. Do 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 do. Batman. 
Batman. Batman! 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 Oh yeah, OMVP! 1960s Batman. Alright, so that's my, that's probably using for OMVP music for this episode. Oh yeah, classic Batman with Adam West and Burt Ward. And we gotta love it. But anyway, OMVP goes to someone that did some very interesting or got caught in a weird situation or an unfortunate situation or they did something by accident that turned out to be good. If you know what my OMVP is all about, you catch the drift by now. But anyway, this OMVP, it's about this little boy, an elementary boy from, he's 10 years old. Um, but just recently, uh, he got suspended from elementary school for a whole week. Um, during recess, he um, used his finger, his index finger, and used it to point the other students like a gun. And, um, of course, I guess the administration didn't like that too much. Um, so they suspended him. They didn't want him using his um, finger to pretend to use it as a gun. And really, that's why I thought when I first heard of this. Really... What kid at recess didn't use the shotgun fingers when they were a little boy? It's called cops and robbers. That's what kids do. They go outside and play. You can't go outside and play no more now. Um, I guess the reason why um, he was ultimately suspended, of course, there, there's a lot of sensitivity to the possibility of people bringing real guns to school and shooting innocent people. That has happened in Ohio a few times. Unfortunately, I guess probably that's why they're paranoid. But, I mean, come on, this kid is not threatening. I mean, if you can see a picture of him. But anyway, this boy, his name is um, Nathan Antigua. I'll spell it, his last name is spelled E N T I N G H Antenna. I, like I said, I tried to pronounce his last name. I, I, gotta, I guess I'm going to go with, um, I'll just call him Nathan, the 10 year old boy. I can't pronounce your last name. I tried. But anyway, Nathan. Um, he seems like a good little kid, just like any other good little kid, and um, he um, was unfairly criticized for doing something violent when he wasn't doing anything bad at all. And I'm sure hundreds of kids at that school that he goes to, they've done it too. You know, they're playing, they're playing cops and robbers. They're having fun. Why can't you have fun in school no more? So, um, but he got suspended, and um, there, um, I guess his parents are appealing that right now. So maybe. They'll appeal, or maybe the school board will give him an apology. Something's gonna come out of it. It's been a, it was big news around here in Ohio this week, and it would be unfair to give him the label of someone that would do something bad to a school campus. I mean, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, he doesn't deserve that. No one does. People that come to school with guns are sickos, and um, there's a big difference between some 20 year old guy who's sick in the head. Lots of drug problems, very depressed. They comes and does stuff like that. And a little boy. He's just been this little boy. But let me tell you something, Nathan. You might be 10, year, 10 years old. You're unfairly suspended from your elementary school, but you're a good kid. You have your whole life ahead of you. And they owe you an apology. But that's not all you're going to be receiving real soon, Nathan. Because i got to give you something. For this episode, you are... O M V P Ohio's most valuable pedestrian. So Nathan Antigua. That's probably not how you say your last name. I tried, but um, good job to you. Just um, you're a good person. Just like all the other children are innocent. Let's leave our children alone for once. But go Nathan. It's your birthday. Here you go, Batman. And I got some special guests right now. I am so excited. They are live in the studio. They're five members of a brand new group here on Wright State University. They are known as the Comic Book League. But say hello, everyone. Hey! Yay! Yay! Yo! All right, but over to my right, we got um, President Christopher Kaus, along with his girlfriend, Mindy. And then over there, in front of me, of course, you guys can see it, Holmes will take my word for it. We got Kathy and her husband. Sam. Sam, <laughs> and then we got Alex Kincaid, who's in his Captain American outfit, yeah. which and I like it. Cool guy. All right, so welcome to the show once again. <laughs> so I got some good questions for you guys, and of course, once again, this will be done in two parts. What you'll do is um, once I get done talking to them the first time around, then um, we'll go to break, play some more songs, and you'll have one last chance to call in. So just a quick reminder. 
I want you guys to participate at home if you have a chance to. So anyway, um, this is for, I guess for Christopher, um, I need to know, um, for those that are at home that don't really don't know what Comic Book League is all about, what is the Comic Book League all about? Um, well, the Comic Book League is a uh, student organization here on campus, um, and we've basically we've been active for about two semesters now. We're actually in our second semester, and um, what it is is basically it's a place, it's an open forum to where people can come learn about comic book culture. Um, we are all about appreciating comic books in every form, every aspect. Uh, we look at all sorts of um, things such as like uh, cosplay. Uh, we look at the history of comic books, how they're created, people that are interested in drawing. Um, we just want to bring uh, a bunch of people from all aspects of the comic book culture together um, to uh, mm -hmm. e even if they're interested in producing comic books in the future, such as myself, I'm interested in writing. Yeah, um, we're we're just uh, someplace where people can come, have a good time, uh, make friends, and um, just basically uh, be safe, you know, in an environment where people can actually hang out and not be criticized for it. All right. Now, did you have a personal reason for starting Comic Book League? Because I haven't get to know you. You really love your comic books. Um, and, of course, it, it, I was surprised it took a while for a Comic Book League of sorts to actually get started in the right state. So did you have a personal um, goal to get one started? And how, how did it come about? Yeah, actually, um, the way it started was actually about a year ago. Um, I was working on a story um, that I wanted to produce as a comic book, and um, that kind of grew into, um, and I'm all for using classes on campus to kind of um, manipulate them, to structure them in the areas that you feel like you're going to actually uh, pursue a career in later on yeah. and so I started turning this story into a novel because I was taking a novel introduction class and um, I turned that into a story and um, I tried to create my own blog and um, I also was trying to get into the community of other comic book um, people out there and so I actually had talked to um, Jesse Noble, who works here on campus, he owns the Gym City Comic Con that's coming up mm -hmm. in April, and um, he actually gave me a few tickets for the convention, and um, he mentioned at that time, um, he said it would be really great if we had an organization here on campus that people could actually, you know, represent the comic book culture, and so it kind of started with that, and um, we, we got everything just barely uh, together in time at the end of the semester, and we had it just in time for fall of last year. And uh, it's been growing ever since, and nothing but good things have come from it so far. All right. Now, this is for anyone in the group to answer. Um, now, comic books, it has a reputation. I know from, like, a higher class of people, or some, they seem to look down on comic books. But um, it has the reputation of being unintelligent storytelling for children. How come it has such a bad reputation among those that don't follow call of book? Co comic books, sorry. You want me to take this? Any, go oh, ahead, man. Yeah, right, anybody. Man. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so, basically, with comic books, it can go either way. Some are intelligent, some aren't. But that can be said with any type of media, novels especially. Um, an example would be like The Da Vinci Code, Twilight, or Fifty Shades of Grey. Those are not really very, like, horribly intelligent stories. It's kind of just cheap entertainment that is just there. And the same thing can be said for comic books. Marvel, DC Comics... It's guys in tights beating up dudes, which is awesome. I like that. I, I read them all the time. However, the, the problem is it's not telling an extremely deep story. Some do, but some also don't. But then there are like some books like 1984 or To Kill a Mockingbird or The Old Man in the Sea. Those are really good, intelligent books. And then there are intelligent comics. Mouse especially is mm -hmm. one of the most noted, probably in my mind, because it won a... I think it was a Pulitzer Prize? Yeah, it was a Pulitzer. <laughs> yeah, and so... Uh, that, that one a prize, it's basically, for those who don't know, it's a interpretation of the Holocaust, but it used cats and mice to represent the Jews and the Nazis. Oh, boy. So it is a very, very dark tale, and it's extremely intelligent, extremely well done. Um, another comic mm -hmm. is The Sandman by Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman is an absolutely fantastic writer. He's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. He does really, really great fantasy novels, and um, for those who don't know what The Sandman is, it's the story, basically, of a... Uh, do you want to explain this, Chris? Because you can explain it. But basically, I, yeah. it's just like angel demon type. Uh, it's it's more so. Um, Sandman is just a, it's much more mature uh, comic book. Um, they're actually they just relaunched a new series Neil Gaiman's doing, 
Um, but it, it deals with uh, the characters of Dream and Death, and that they're brother and sister, and um, it, it's, a, it's a very dark comic. It was actually written in the 80s, um, so it was around the time that um, you know, there was a lot of political stuff going on, and this is around the time that Watchmen had come out. Um, so if you've ever read the book like that, um, you know there's a lot of political, um, I guess, uh, propaganda within it. And comic books have had political propaganda in them for, you know, the last, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. Um, mm. You know, with Batman and uh, Robin and Superman teaming up and uh, selling um, war bonds. Um, you also had Captain America punching out um, Nazis um, in these comic books and stuff. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I think, you know, also looking at... Um, some of the history with comics, which is something that we try to do in our organization meetings, um, I think uh, one of the things that deserves mentioning is um, The Seduction of Innocence, which was a book that was written in 1954, and that was by, um, I think it was Frederick um, Weltham, and uh, this was a professor or a uh, doctor who was actually looking at delinquent children, and these delinquent children were basically, the connection that he found was that they all read comic books. And so around that time, that's when they implemented in the comic book code, which basically said comic books, this comic book would not have, um, you know, any adult material in it, any violence. And um, this was why you don't see a whole lot of comic books from around that time period, because uh, parents were taking them away from their children, they were throwing them away. So, um, you know, to go back to your question, um, I I think it kind of shows that we, even though have had a history of... Uh, comic books um, being for children and for adults, there are there are plenty of them out there for different mature readers. Yeah. Um, but there are still some out there for children, you know, for fun purposes. But they can definitely be used to teach with. All right, that's that's a good explanation right there. Now I've always noticed that um, for many years, I, comic, the comic book culture, like cosplay and people dressing up, that was always popular in California and or even some bigger cities. I don't see much of that. I, for the longest time, I didn't see much of that in Dane, Ohio, and especially Zenia, Ohio, where there's no comic books stores and um, or such leagues I know of. Um, slowly but surely, it is getting more popular. I mean, we have a club on campus now for comic books. How how is it at? Um, I guess what I want to know is why is comic books and the culture surrounding it so popular right now, or growing in popularity? Um. Go ahead. Cool. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> I have a lot, I have too much to say sometimes. That's the problem. Uh, basically, nowadays, you can throw a dart at any movie blockbuster type screening place, because I can word properly, movie theater. <laughs> you can throw a dart at what's showing, and you could probably hit a comic book type movie. Um, just to list off a few. Wanted. That was ba- some people don't know that it was based off a comic book rather loosely, but it was still based off of one. Mm-hmm. Three hundred, any Marvel or DC film, uh, Batman, Captain America are probably one of the prominent ones that you've probably seen. Walking Dead is a TV show that is now uh, extremely popular. Watchmen, Hellboy, list goes on, and basically, it is now come to the point where comic books are to the point where you can. Basically, just go and go go to a movie theater and see something that's related to comic books, which makes mm. that comic book is a kind of like a stepping stone for stories now. Movies are now not uh, some are independent, and there's a, there's a whole genre for independent films, but a lot of them are being made for um, from comic books, and so a lot of these ideas are coming from comic books because you've got the whole the whole story storyboarded for you, which is a big, huge process for uh, movie makers, and so to have that done for you already. Um, you can really get a solid movie or TV show. And uh, yeah. when it's done right, you get Walking Dead. When it's done wrong, you get something like World War Z, which I personally <laughs> didn't like. Hey, I like that movie. But, I mean, <laughs> it just, it was, it, it, it's to each, to, to each his own, I guess. Yeah. I always thought World War Z was based off of a book, though. I thought it was, uh, well, then maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I was, someone told me that it was based off a comic book. I'm sure there has been an adaptation. There's somewhere. maybe, yeah, I'm, I may be wrong. But I was just... This this it's kind of sad how comic books are a stepping stone and not really as prevalent as they should be. However, they have gone from something that a bunch of nerds in a in a basement, which is the stereotype. That's a stereotype. To, it's a, something that is like it's now cool to wear a comic book sweatshirt. I get a ton of compliments for my Captain America sweatshirt, and 
I'm pretty sure I was like I used to get bullied for being someone who really liked Spider-Man. So I mean, it's it's now become more acceptable. I think nerds have now inherited the world where you can go to something someplace like a Comic Con and actually uh, be surrounded by people who love the same interests as you. So I think that's that's my take on why comic books have become so much more popular. Well, um, there's also the idea that the comic books are really very adaptable to any any group at all. It's like it's not just a specific genre of books. It's it's a whole medium. It's very much like books. It's just a different form. Um, like music, it's not just like, oh, music used to be not very cool, and now it's kind of cool. <laughs> music has always been adapting and adapting, and people have adapted with it. There are mm-hmm. just, as we as have been said, has been said, it's not just Spider Man and Superman fighting in the streets. There are tons of different kinds of comic books out there. I just recently read one actually called Fun Home, and it was it was about a it was a family drama, and it was about a girl who grew up in a home that was not um, very tender. If, if <laughs> that's you fine. Know, that's that, what you want to say. Yeah. Very tendered, like okay. It's yeah. not so, something where it'd be t- men in tights type deal. No, it wasn't a human. It was. It had funny parts, but it was just any medium where it can branch off, and not everyone likes rap music, but they can dig the jazz. <laughs> 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 they can dig on the jazz. So really, anyone could get into it if they just give it a shot. All right. Well, that's a good explanation, and I do agree that I think. When they start making more movies from comic book stories and they did so well at the box office, I think that played a role in it also. And of course, um, G4, I think it helped also, although they did go out of business. So. But we got, the, we got the internet, so you, know, you can always watch special videos on the internet of Comic Con conventions. I think it's great. So yeah, I, just people more aware of it now. Now That helped me get more aware of it. Although I was into it when I was a kid, but... In my young adult life, I noticed it from the internet and just seen it. It's evolved. It's evolved to my liking, so I agree. Yeah, going off Kathy's... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Going off Kathy's music metaphor, it's like some of these guys who create the comics are becoming rock stars in a way. Like, Hollywood has done uh, a a lot by putting Stan Lee, like, in... Mm -hmm. The cameo roles and, and these comic cons are becoming huge events that are covered by mainstream media suddenly. And mm-hmm. it, the attention is, I think it's a good stepping stone for mm-hmm. people to, if they're more curious, uh, you know, wonder uh, who is that Stanley guy and, and what are these comic cons about and maybe attend one. And these events are also like um, where like they announce the big films, but also if you can go for that or you can go for seeing what vendors are, are selling comic-wise. So um, I think it's it's a, it's a really good thing. All right. Yeah, that was Sam speaking just now. So, yeah, we got like I said, we got five people in here. But now i got to know next, and I know we, there's like a niche group. The people that do follow comic books closely, there's like a niche group in the Dayton, Ohio area, and I guess Ohio in general. Um, I've noticed that, um, I guess it's been like this all my life, like in the news, the newspaper, um, I guess in your high school, it's been the culture's been dominated by sports. Like it's always about sports, or it's always about politics. Like um, who's run for governor? You don't hear much about fantasy culture and um, fun cultures like comic book leagues. Um, what I want to know is, do you feel like um, have in the past have you been um, in a newspaper, any media you can think of? Have you been treated fairly by um, like have you been represented fairly? Can you think of a time that maybe you were made fun of in the media? Apparently, I'm having to answer I, this question. I, I yeah, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Wait, too much, man. You're, you're the president. I think Chris can answer this. Have you been made? Yeah, you've been represented properly by the media in Dane, Ohio. Um, first off, I'd like to say I hate sports. Um, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> ooh, ooh, shit. Okay, I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hide my face around campus for a while. Um, <laughs> They can't see it right now, so it's okay. <laughs> no, I actually, I, I like sports. I appreciate sports. Um, and just like that, you know, I think there's a, there's a group, you know, for comic books. Um, and I think that uh, the way it's been pursued so far, um, how people um, in this area represent comic books, I think um, it's, it's a very subculture um, is yeah. what it is. And although we don't have, you know, huge, massive funding, I think that funding that people put towards sports is actually, you know, like we were talking about, actually is going towards the movies. Um, not so much that 
these movies haven't been around for a while, but more so because now we have the technology to do it right. Um, there were tons of comic book movies that were out in the 80s and, and stuff. You know, there was an old Captain America, which was hilarious if you ever watch it. <laughs> um, but um, I, I think that funding in that, that genre is, um, it's a very, um, it's a closed group in some sense. And that's kind of, you know, with like our comic book league, we can bring people out of their shells, you know, to actually interact with other people that uh -huh. are comic book interested. Um, but I mean, I've, um, done some dealings with, you know, like, uh, local comic shops, which we have some really great ones here in the area. We, I mean, from here down to like downtown Dayton, you could probably at least find five different comic book shops. Um, and it's not like there's anything keeping from people going to these shops. It's just that, you know, it's like, it's a book. It's like any other story that you would read. I mean, if you... Um, if you enjoy Harry Potter, I mean, it's almost the same thing, is that there's uh, stories that you read, and then there you have friends that read that too, but you don't sit and dwell, well, some people do, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't really sit down and you don't dwell, like, on these things throughout the day, you know, like, sports all, hey, did you see the game last night? You know, it's not as, um, I guess, um, viewable, as easy accessible as it is to watch a football game every Sunday. Um, yeah. But it's like, for me, every Wednesday is brand new comic book day. Uh -huh. I get to go into the shop, you know, and actually, um, you know, talk with my comic book uh, owner, and comic shop owner, um, and have a great discussion, you know, about, like, what's new, what's coming out. Um, and uh, I think, you know, the Internet, you know, is the place to go um, for these comic book discussions and stuff. So, um, although the Internet, I don't think, is the greatest place because people are a little bit more... Uh, I guess lucrative about what they say you know they're a little bit more easy to sit back and you know slam somebody's work that you know they've been doing on a certain comic book um, rather than actually sitting down in a room one-on-one -on -one with somebody that does appreciate somebody's work so but that, that's an entirely different discussion so I, I think that comic books are definitely growing um, I don't think it's a coincidence that these movies are making millions and billions of dollars um, becoming you know number one hits in the country mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, it's just now, you know, that it's becoming more prevalent because we do have the movies, that it is letting other people access it even more so, as if it were a sports event that was being watched on TV. So. That's an excellent explanation, man. That is that is great. Now, I got to quit. This is for all five of you to answer or try to answer. Um, if you were a superhero, what would you call yourself and what superpowers would you have? Um Okay. Well, Alex first. All right, I'll go first. But I really quickly, I'm just gonna plug in my Twitter. So go everyone, ahead. Everyone knows where. So if you want to ask a question, you can tweet at me at cbl underscore revan r e v a n or uh, tweet and put the hashtag wsu comics and uh, I'll see if we can get the question on the show. But uh, not just the questions question, you can tell us we're wrong. Or, you, or yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not we like can it doesn't. Have, yeah, well, we could say we're uh, ugly, even though you can't see us. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I smell bad. Yeah, he has an awesome voice. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Kind of Anything. Uh, but the question was, what kind of superhero would I be, or what was it? Again? If a viewer, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, if you were a superhero, what would you call yourself, and what are your powers? Oh, man, that is really tricky. I don't know if I'd have a name because. If, if it were in the sense, literal sense of here and now where there aren't many, like, I wouldn't have to really fight crime, I'd probably, like, have super, super smarts so I can really, like, uh, what was the guy from Watchmen? The guy, uh, it was his, like, name was Adrian, I think. Ozymandias. Yeah, well, he was a, basically a guy who was a genius. That way I could, if I wanted to, build whatever, be the, be the Tony Stark, or I could just graduate with an A and get my degree, <laughs> and then maybe <laughs> do, do good stuff for humanity. I don't know if I'd be a traditional crime-fighting human. So you would be the superhero of no name that was really, really smart. Yeah, probably. I think, I think that would be appealing to me. For you me. would just be your own hero, basically. Uh, basically, like, I'm so smart. Mm, <laughs> no one has to tell me anything, because I'm always the right. The smartest man in the world. Yeah, there you go. I would totally be into that. Save, human, save the human race right. from AIDS or something. I don't know. All right. Anyone else? Um, yeah, man, you, you totally stole mine, Alexander. I was gonna, <laughs> well, I was going to model mine after Tony Stark. I mean... He's my hero. I've got Iron Man as my uh, desktop background on my computer for God knows how long. <laughs> um, I know. It's it's at work too for all my coworkers to proudly see. But anyway, proudly. Um, yes, you gotta own it, man. Anyway, um, and for 
powers, I guess. Yeah, I, I love the high-tech gadgetry stuff. We're both studying electrical engineering, and uh, and so <laughs> we, we like the, the gadgets and stuff. And uh, flying is just, man, teleportation. I, I just don't like so, driving. There's so many yeah. things that I'll, you could do with, like, electronics right? and technology. Yeah, so getting around, any way I could do that faster, more awesomely. Imagine be being cool. the guy like, oh, yeah, I built a basically a spaceship that would be able for us to go in like light years out right like you ha you could do that because you're so <laughs> smart like oh, cool hopefully guy. you'd <laughs> sell your idea better than that if you well, were i wouldn't smart. be <laughs> hey man i made a ship and it goes far so hey give me money right <laughs> right what were you kathy i would my name would be everyone girl okay <laughs> <laughs> like, <this> because <laughs> Because I would be the people for the people. I would be the ultimate, hey guys, I'm your friend, superhero, not not above you, but with you, on par, equal, okay. all that cool stuff. And my, my superpower would be healing. And I could heal physical stuff and mental stuff and emotional stuff. <laughs> all right. You know? <laughs> Uh, and make hey, everyone that could, feel that could cool. Permanently everyone, girl, and she heals yeah. everything. Ultimate. That's a good power. power. Just say it. All right, now we got Christopher and Mindy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I want Batman superpowers. All right. <laughs> so you just you become the be new rich. Batman. <laughs> you just want to be rich. <laughs> I just, like, ticked off everybody out there that knows anything be... about Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I think uh, I would be known as Congressman, and I would fix everything <laughs> about the government. <laughs> so we'll just leave it at that. You kill everyone? He's <laughs> actually a super villain. Oh! Good one. Where's my, your I wish I had a drum set for that. Ouch. Alright, and of course, Manny would be your assistant. She'd be oh. the first lady then. That's right, my secretary. Uh, that, that's good, alright. I turned that job down. Oh, she turned it down? Uh-oh. <laughs> And we are back live with Ohio's on Fire. And of course, I'm here live in the studio with my friends from the comic book league. We got Alex, yeah. Sam, and then Kathy, and President Christopher, and Mindy. Woot woot. Yeah, that's right, Mandy. Woot woot. <laughs> now, we, they, we, they, got a special yeah. they got a special treat for everyone at home. Um, being at their comic book fanatics, there's been a lot of good stories from Comic World, and they want to present you um, as a group the top 10. Greatest storylines of all time from any comic book or movie or any. So um, they've talked it out and they want to present it live on the air where they think it's the 10 greatest stories of all time. And you can debate at home if you hate the ideas or if you, you can throw. You can, yes, you can throw trash at them call when you us, see. Please. Or call you them. This list was thrown together during the music break. So. Yes. <laughs> Probably not even close. All right, so go ahead. That's from 10 to 1. Top 10 list, greatest stories from comic it's books. It's going to be a drum roll, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, number 10. <laughs> well, these are in no particular order. Um, <laughs> yeah. These are all great books. Um, highly recommended from our selection here. Uh, a few of them, you know, some of them we agree with. Other people don't. So, anyway, so number one uh, is going to be Watchmen. Um, highly great. Really great book by Alan Moore. Um, definitely read that one. And uh, we have The Killing Joke. Yes, I have nothing to say about that's it. From that's from Batman. That's Batman, the Killing Joke. Uh, one of it's another Alan Moore book. Uh, it's probably one of the um, most influential books of all time uh, regarding Batman. Um, then next we have uh, Kingdom Come. Uh, it was written by Mark Wade, who's actually going to be at this year's uh, Gem City Comic Con. Uh, so highly recommend that one. Go ahead and get it signed uh, this year. Next is this one. <laughs> all right. All-Star Superman. All-Star Superman. Is that number seven, or is this, we not doing numbers now? <laughs> I think we're, we're I think skipping I number. This one. is number four. Number four, uh, okay. <laughs> number four. All-Star Superman. Uh, Superman gets super cancer. <laughs> All right. No, I'm Pretty just much. kidding. Um, the next one that we had uh, was Batman Nightfall. Um, okay. It's uh, very, the the new the newest Batman movie, um, Batman, uh, or Rise, was it? called i can't remember dark knight yeah the dark knight rises um some president i am <laughs> uh, the dark knight rises is loosely based off of the nightfall um story arc which lasted for about three years which okay. was really good so okay and we got v from vendetta of course v for vendetta yeah. now the movie or the book the book of okay course. i mean well i mean the movie was really movie. good too yeah so. okay really good representation of the of the comic book series i think in my mind okay and next uh we have on our list uh preacher 
Um, this one is a very dark, um, almost religiously blasphemous um, book, oh. but uh, it's somewhat controversial. However, uh, it's very I know. Controversial. Yes. Uh, AM- <laughs> so you have to read it. <laughs> uh, AMC is actually uh, working on a pilot episode um, yeah. right now um, with Seth Rogen, I think. Yeah, uh, Seth Rogen, Adam Greenberg. Yeah, so, but I mean, it, it's an amazing book. It keeps you enthralled the entire time. Um, the whole series is really good and just kind of fun to read, so. But uh, he's definitely a mature uh, read, so. Mm-hmm. And next we have Mouse, uh, mentioned earlier with the. Nazi cats and the Jewish mice. Um, I've only heard good reviews of it. I'm, I've been meaning to read it. Didn't get to it yet. But it it, it's on my list. list. It's, it's on this list and my list. And that was made by Art Spiegelman. Uh, and that is a uh, Pulitzer Prize winning book, of course. Um, next on our list is Sandman. Um, and this is Neil Gaiman's work. Um, just any of the books are really, really good. Uh, highly come recommended by most of us here that have read it. Um, it's dark, uh, it's gritty, it's funny. Okay. Um, it's sandy gritty. And the last one that we had on our list. Number one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim uh. versus the world. Oh. <laughs> oh no. This is this is one that isn't like. This is not. Isn't this that is not supposed to be taken seriously. It does not reflect the views of Right Take Great movie. Uh, it's a great movie. Uh, it's not necessarily a traditional comic. It's more towards manga, but it's still in the in the realm of a comic book. But it's still a great story. It captures uh, college life pretty pretty accurately in my mind. All right. But very very good. If you want something fun that isn't completely like straight up comic books, where you have to you have to really kind of. It's kind of hard to start with comic book heroes sometimes because there's so much but with Scott Pilgrim I think it's only 12 volumes maybe and uh, so yeah it's really easy it's one storyline really easy to get into and it's really good worth definitely worth the money warning this episode of Ohio is on fire contains strong opinions and viewpoints that belong to the host and guests that appear on Ohio is on fire this show contains entertainment and honesty that reaches extreme levels please do not try this at home Tyrants did it. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel okay. Castro took the guns. Many... Hugo Chavez took the guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. My name is Elizabeth Holford, and I'm the executive director at Equality Ohio. I have a first amendment. Equality Ohio. Ohio. And these officers want me to leave this position just because you got killed. Equality, Ohio. Can you believe it? Witnesses say during a heated confrontation, a health care reform opponent had his pinky finger bitten off when he stuck it in a health care reformer supporter's face. Police say the 65-year-old man picked up his finger and drove himself to Los Robles Hospital, where they're now trying to reattach it. Police tonight are searching for the biter who ran from the scene. Hey, look! Silence! I can't take no more. Fire! 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 Let's just talk. Listen, I'm sorry. You're highly professional at what you do. Get here! Christ! Oh, Christ! Oh!